so uh, before i begin i would like to thank viraj and uh, thank you all once again uh, for uh, uh, being a part of our annual event this fourth media gi uh, conference uh, my topic is uh, sprt in locally advanced ca pnprs so uh, we have already discussed a lot about uh, the pancreatic uh, cancers in uh, debate and panel a very quick background uh, we know that surgery is the only curative options unfortunately the biology is so bad the survival uh, we have not seen uh, a great survival in, uh, in the last couple of decades despite best of the therapies so hardly a one third of patient uh, they are resectable at presentation well the majority of patients they have to undergo either chemotherapy or chemo radiation as new adjuvant or definitive therapies uh resectability status again has been discussed previously so i will not go into the details firstly we know that the all tumors are divided into the resectable borderline or unresectable uh, well my talk will not focus on resectable uh, tumors i'll be concentrating more on unresectable and to a part on borderline resectable tumors so when we talk about the treatment paradigm these are the options treatment options we have when we have unresectable or borderline resectable tumors uh, either we uh, subject them them to chemotherapy alone or sometimes uh, we prefer giving definitive chemo radiation sometimes chemotherapy followed by chemo radiation or sometimes chemotherapy followed by sprt so why we want to deliver radiation very well pointed out in the previous discussions that we want to sterilize the vessel margin especially when we are talking about borderline or uh, locally advanced tumors we want to sterilize the vessel margins we want to enhance the likelihood of margin negative resections we want to provide adequate local control and we want to prevent or delay progression and sometimes we want to palliate pain and bleeding or relieve obstructive symptoms and why local control is that important this was shown in one of the study by hopkins this was a, a study on autopsy series where they found that 30% of the patients they died uh, from the locally destructive disease with few or no uh, metastasis uh, mets so what is sbrt the acr and astro they defined sbrt as an external beam radiation therapy method used to deliver very precisely a very high dose of radiation to an extra cranial target within the body using either single or multiple uh, dose or a small number uh, in a high dose in a, in a single or multiple number of fractions so why we want pancreas sbrt because we know that local control is very important particularly in advanced cancers chemo radiation is not that easy giving delivering 50 or 60 grade over 5 to 6 weeks with uh, with the chemotherapy uh, and a lot of gi toxicities lot many acute gi toxicities uh, so sbrt can offer uh, equal or better local control with less and acute toxicity is what we believe and what we have seen so far with the literature available uh, we are having so far and this is one such literature this was basically a, 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 a this was the data from the national cancer database where they concluded uh, that retrospectively retrospective analysis showed that sbrt was associated with superior overall survival when compared with conventional uh, fractionated chemo radiation particularly for the locally advanced pancreatic cancers talking about the clinical outcomes of sbrt in pancreas uh, this was probably the first study published uh, way back in 2004 this was a small phase 1 study done at stanford university there seven patients seven patients they received 25 gray single fraction sbrt and the local control was fantastic there were no major side effects and, and the median survival was 11 months the results encouraged them to do a phase 2 study which was published next year but this time what they did that they used sbrt as a boost after 45 gray and uh, Uh, that 45 gray mrt was with chemotherapy the local control was 94% but there were increased grade 3 gi toxicities so then there were various uh, single and multi fraction regimes which are tried and they concluded that multi fraction regimes they have less sbrt sbrt related toxicities this is another phase 2 multi center trial by herman et al published in cancer 2014 this was then at john hopkins and skcc and stanford this was a phase 2 uh, study they had 49 patients and at a median follow up of 39 point uh, 13.9 months uh, 
the study uh, protocol included gemcide for uh, three uh, less three weeks or less, followed by SBRT and again followed by gemcide. SBRT was given in the doses of 33 grays in five fractions. 83% uh, local progression-free survival was observed, and the side effects or the toxicities were quite acceptable. This is a list of multiple trials, which, uh, which uh, uh, and various trials. Most of them they have uh, evaluated locally advanced or locally recurrent pancreatic tumors, different different dose schedules, and we can see the different control rates ranging from 40% to up to 100% in some series. Uh, so overall, when we say see that the local control rates are quite good and the toxicities are quite uh, acceptable when we talk about SBRT. Uh, to continue, uh, again, when we look at the, this, these studies, very interesting is this uh, done by Mongini et al, which was published in 2015, because here, uh, while most of the studies, they included unresectable patients, this group, uh, they included patients who had borderline resectable disease, and the results were uh, quite good. So, what is the rationale for you, new, uh, using new adjuvant therapy? Again, as was discussed in uh, debate and panel, because most of the patients, almost 25% of the patients, they might not receive adjuvant therapy in time. Many of the patients, they will be spared of the morbidity of resection because by the time, uh, you know, their microscopic disease may become clinically evident. So there's no point and they may be spared of the morbidity of resection. It could be, if theoretically it is, uh, and in fact, practically, this is less toxic and more effective uh, because uh, uh, there are a lot of issues when we uh, do post-operative, especially for any GI site, uh, may it be esophagus, uh, hepatobiliary, or it is rectum. We always prefer it going before surgery because once a patient is operated, the tumor bed basically is nothing but a small bowel which we do not actually want to radiate. And of course, downstaging the local and unresectable reason, uh, lesions is also important. So that's why neo adjuvant therapies are preferred. And now coming on to the data, what we are having. So we have a lot of retrospective data. Recently, there are a few trials, we have prospective studies also, but uh, this is one such uh, retrospective study. This was uh, done at uh, Moffitt Cancer Center, Tampa. 73 patients, they were evaluated respect retrospectively. 56 of these patients, they had borderline resectable disease and they were treated using a dose painting technique. Dose painting is a technique where they try to give a higher dose at the, uh, at the area within, within the tumor, which was in close contact with the vessel in question, while the rest of the tumor was given a slightly lower dose within the same fraction. And this was done after three cycles of neoadjuvant chemotherapy with gemcitabine, taxotere, and zoloda. And this restaging was done after four weeks. The overall uh, response was quite good. Good number of patients eventually underwent surgery. And there, there was a very high rate, 97% uh, of patients, they had R0 resection. And the complete pathological response was seen in 9% of the patients. And uh, as can be expected, the patients who eventually undergo R0 resection or surgery, they, they, they were likely to have better survival compared to the patients who could not. The toxicity was quite acceptable. And, uh, and that's why probably uh, we feel that new adjuvant uh, therapy and should include SBRT as well. Another uh, uh, retrospective data from the National Cancer Database, they also uh, evaluated the different new adjuvant regimes. Uh, and they basically, they compared three uh, uh, arms, the one arm which had chemotherapy only, the other arm which uh, used chemotherapy with SBRT and the third arm which had chemotherapy and conventional fractionated radiation. And these were the outcomes. They clearly is uh, documented that chemo SBRT definitely has a better survival when we compared with chemo alone or chemo and conventionally fractionated radiation, of course, the chemotherapy uh, was uh, we cannot we cannot uh, say that was a standard one. Nowadays, we are having much better molecules, much better regimes, and we expect much better outcomes nowadays with the current regimes.
When we talk about toxicities, of course, this is a major concern, but most of the series that they have shown acceptable toxicities, most of them are nausea, diarrhea, abdominal pain. Very few studies have shown more grade three toxicities. The one which you are seeing here. Dr. Sumit, two minutes left. left. Sorry? Uh, sir, two minutes left. Yeah, yeah, we'll be continuing soon. Most of the studies, they have uh, shown uh, acceptable toxicities. So the one uh, by Kung et, uh, et al. in 2005, as I showed, they included IMRT as well, and SBRT was used as a boost. And that's why we are seeing more grade three toxicities in their regime, in their study. The studies which have compared cost effectiveness of the pancreas SBRT, where this was one such study which was, which was published by Murphy et al. in 2012, where they compared GEM alone, GEM versus plus conventional radiation, IMRT and SBRT, and they concluded that unlike IMRT, SBRT plus GEM increases the clinical effectiveness beyond GEM alone at a potentially acceptable cost. So these were the ESCO uh, uh, recommendations which are published in 2016, where they recommend using uh, conventional fractionated or SBRT in upfront settings uh, in the upfront locally advanced patients or patients who have a stable disease after neurogen chemo, chemotherapy or the patients who have received neurogen chemotherapy and, and for the toxicities they cannot continue, they are also candidates for SBRT or conventional fractionated radiation. The alliance trial, recently we have seen the results, they are not that much in favor and uh, they have used the, uh, the standard uh, modified polyphirinox. But again, you cannot probably, it is too early to comment uh, or to, uh, to comment that SBRT has no role, there are many other trials like TOPANC1, TOPANC2, and uh, we are waiting for RTOG 0848. Uh, probably we'll be having better answers when we have the result uh, and the full uh, details of these studies. When we talk about contraindications, so there's one clear contraindication for SBRT in pancreas when there's diseases uh, directly involved in the bowel or stomach. SBRT definitely should not be tried. When we talk about challenges uh, for SBRT, the problem is the location. Most of the tumor, they are located, uh, located in the head of pancreas, and this resides in close proximity to the C-loop of the duodenum. And delivering very high dose of radiation in this particular area is quite challenging. The other challenge is the movement. While delivering any high dose of radiation, this is the, the motion management is very important. And this is the kind of motion which uh, a normal person have uh, during breathing or during peristalsis. And so pancreas also moves a lot. And unless we have uh, ways to address this motion, SBRT should not be tried. When we talk about how to go ahead, how, when we choose a patient, these are the steps. We should definitely uh, 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 prefer gold marks or, or, or markers before we are planning for a, a SBRT. Uh, so ideally when we are, we, you know well, uh, the patient will be undergoing SBRT, I would prefer placement of uh, these uh, markers at least two to three weeks before I'm planning to deliver this therapy. Uh, it depends on uh, center to center, what kind of motion management strategy uh, they, they have or the kind of setup they have, they may, they may prefer, but motion management and strict immobilization is must if you're planning for SBRT, the kind of dose distribution we expect from SBRT, which we cannot expect in normal 3D conformal radiation. Various machines were capable of delivering SBRT, any of these machines. And of course, as I said, motion management, is, which is very important. If you're having these two, you can definitely think about uh, doing SBRT in pancreatic cancers. So to conclude, SBRT can be considered an effective and safe therapeutic uh, option in the management of unresectable and borderline resectable locally advanced pancreatic cancers. In contrast to conventional radiation, it can save a lot of precious time and at the same time, we can provide a very high tumorocidal dose. Pancreatic SBRT it remains an exciting field for further investigation as more clinical evidence they become available. Uh, we will have more uh, data on the efficacy and safety. Uh, probably we'll be in a better uh, condition uh, to you know, use this in uh, cleaning. Thank you.